Hello everyone! Something a little different today. I did a lesson at a middle school to a grade 7 science class. Uh, I was asked to teach about mining and tie it to their rock identification lessons they had done recently. So here we are, a lesson to grade 7s. over at Mount Boucherie. I am also a prospector and miner. I do gold mining. I like finding gold. And um, I was asked to come and talk to you guys today a little bit about rocks and minerals because I hear that's what you're learning about right now. Uh, I also have another connection to the school. Anyone know uh, my other connection to this school? Miss Hart. Yes. Miss Hart and I are, are married. <laughs> yes. And my son goes here as well. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I do, about sort of mining in the area. Uh, we'll try to sort of connect it to what you guys have learned about classifications of rocks. You guys all know the metamorphic sedimentary igneous rocks? You guys have learned all that? Perfect. Uh, BC, where you guys live here, BC is one of the hot spots in the world for mining. We have a crazy amount of gold and some gemstones in BC ourselves. But more than that, Vancouver, the city of Vancouver, is one of the major hubs in the world for mining companies. So mining is huge in BC. Now the mining I do is all locally here. It's all very, very small scale. I like finding gold and gems. It's just fun to do. Uh, but as far as BC goes, we have a huge mining industry here in BC. Now as I talk to you guys a little bit about mining and mines in the area, I am going to be slowly panning away while I'm talking. I brought some material today from one of my mine sites. This is a placer mine, so it means that there's gold in a river. And I'm going to slowly pan away here, and hopefully by the time we're done, you guys get to see a little bit of gold in the bottom of my pan. I also have a piece of rock here that comes from one of my mine sites. And if you look at the rock, and I'll let you guys pass this around, if I look at the rock with a little magnifying glass, you tell me, what do you see on there? Take, take the magnifying glass, take the rock. Oh, you have to prom promise me one thing. You're not going to lick this rock. Okay. Don't lick the rock. Okay. I'll tell you why in a second. <laughs> not that you would lick a rock. What do you see on there? Gold. Unfortunately, no. It's fool's gold. Unfortunately not. Uh, hopefully there's some gold in there, because this comes from a mine that I hope to do really well on for gold. But right now what we see is fool's gold all over the surface of this rock. Now if we flip over the rock, there's a little bit on the back here, this little shiny silver bit. That's a poison. That's why I say don't lick it. Because that there is arsenic. Arsenic is a poison. So it's not going to hurt you by holding it and rubbing it, that kind of stuff. But you definitely won't want to go in there and start licking this thing. Uh, but I'm going to pass this around with the magnifying. While I'm talking, everyone have a good look at what gold ore looks like. Unfortunately, there's no visible gold. It's just fool's gold ore. Do you have a question there? Um, isn't fool's gold also called pyrite? It is. That's iron pyrite on the surface of this one. So pass it around. Have a look while I talk. But don't lick it, anyone. Don't lick it. You conquering me. <laughs> okay, now, as I said, I'm going to pan this out slowly. You can definitely watch me panning, and we'll see what we get in the end here. You guys are looking about, uh, learning about rocks and minerals right now. Do you know what a gold, what the gold rush is? You guys heard about the gold rush before? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Heard about Wh it. Yeah. Where, where was the gold rush? Somewhere in Klondike River. Klondike River. Excellent very major gold rush in the Klondike River. Now, if the gold rush was in the Klondike, what do people mean when they talk about the California gold rush? California's not in the Klondike. You know why they would say a California gold rush if the gold rush was in the Klondike? What you got? Um, is it because people from California were going there? Not quite. Well, they did. They did, for sure, but no. What do you think? Jewelry? No. Gold rush, there isn't one gold rush. The Klondike gold rush was a big one, for sure, but there's actually hundreds, if not thousands, of different gold rushes. There's the California gold rush, the Klondike gold rush. One famous around here is the Barkerville, or the Caribou gold rush. In fact, even here in Kelowna, we had a gold rush. 
because Mission Creek, the creek that runs through Kelowna, has lots of gold in it. And back in the day, well, a hundred years ago, long time ago, there was gold found on Mission Creek. The people that found the gold talked to other people about finding gold in Mission Creek. And then everyone rushed to Mission Creek looking for gold. And that's what a gold rush is. It's one person finding it, bragging to his friends that he found gold, and then all of his friends are going go there to try to steal his gold. That's a gold rush. A uh, really neat story about the uh, Mission Creek Gold Rush. Uh, back a oh, long time ago, 100 years ago, maybe not quite that long, but a long time ago, there was a First Nations fella who lived in West Bank here, West Bank First Nations, who was a miner. And he would take his canoe across the lake. There was no bridge at that time. He would take his canoe across the lake. He would go and walk into the hills of East Kelowna. Every morning, he would arrive with an empty pouch Every night he would come down with a full pouch of gold. He would go to the local restaurants and drinking establishments and buy everyone drinks and food. And by the end of that night, he would have no gold left. He would have spent it all. And then the next day, he would head up into the hills again, get another pouch full of gold, and do that over again every night. Well, the locals really want to find out where he was getting this gold because everyone wants gold. So they tried to follow him up into the hills. And now... This First Nations guy, he knew the backcountry. He knew the hills so well, and he knew he was being followed. So he would hide, he would go quickly, he would, he would ditch them every time. No one ever found out where he was getting all of his gold from. And unfortunately, one night in a bar fight or something like that, he was killed. Hmm. He, he died. And never revealing where he got that gold from. So still to this day, somewhere up, in East Kelowna, there's a lost gold mine full of gold that people don't know where it is. Now, in all actuality, probably someone's found it since then and just never told anyone they found it. But the story goes that it was lost when he died, and no one knows where it is from there. Very interesting story about Kelowna and the Kelowna, the Mission Creek Gold Rush. Anyone seen any gold in my pan yet? Anyone see anything there? You do? Where? Do you see it? I don't see anything. Do you see anything? No. no. Interesting thing about gold is it's so heavy. Gold is so, so heavy that when you shake your pan, it always sits on the bottom, underneath everything else. So I can throw away these rocks because, you know, we don't find gold that big around here, unfortunately. That would be nice, but it doesn't happen. So I'll keep panning. Eventually we'll see the gold. Eventually it'll come out. Seen it yet? No, no, nothing yet. Let's put this all back in here and start squishing it around backwards and see what we can see. Anyone see gold yet? Oh, yeah. oh there it is. There's the gold from one of my Fraser River gold claims. Just flakes, though. Just flakes, yeah. Now, I knew I would find gold in there. Do you know how I knew I'd find the gold there? Put some in. I put it down this way. <laughs> exactly. I put some in. I put some in so you guys would all see it this morning. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't actually commonly find pieces of gold that big. As far as gold goes, that's a big piece. So, typically I'd find these little tiny flakes. Those would be what I would normally find. So, talk about Mission Creek again. You guys all know... Oh, you have a question. What's uh, up? How much, like... How much do you think the gold is right there? Oh, there's or probably about $20, $25 worth of gold in that pan right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mission Creek, you guys are all familiar with Lair Cake Mountain, the big mountain over there that looks like it's just all, all these layers on it. You guys remember we seeing that? No? no? Okay, when you're driving out East Cologne, if you look up at the hills, you'll see a mountain that's just got all these layers. Those layers are lava flows. Lava flowed, it hardened, then more lava flowed on top of it and hardened, and more lava hardening. What kind of rock is that? Igne Igneous. 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 Go, going back to your, your, your knowledge from last time, anytime lava cools, it's an igneous rock. Now, the gold, the gold that we find in Mission Creek, and there's lots of good gold in Mission Creek, doesn't come from the igneous rock. You do get gold in igneous rocks, but it doesn't come from it there. 
Back millions, if not billions of years ago, long, long time ago, there was a big river that flowed right through all of BC. Huge river. And since then, you know, glaciers came, erosion happened. That river doesn't exist anymore. But the riverbed, the gravels, the sand, the mud that was in the riverbed, all stayed in place where the river used to be and hardened into a rock. What kind of rock comes from hardening sediments? Sedimentary. Sedimentary, of course, yes. It's a sedimentary rock called a conglomerate. And the gold in Mission Creek all comes from that conglomerate rock being eroded by the river. The river erodes that rock and frees up all the gold back down into the river. It's very well known in Mission Creek where the gold comes from. I so know exactly where this conglomerate rock is. And all the gold that's in the river comes from that one sedimentary rock. So there's just a big chunk of gold? There is a lot of gold in that sedimentary rock. They don't actually mine the rock itself because the gold is too spread out in the rock. But when it gets down into the river, the river concentrates it. And that's why gold panners can go up there and find it easy. So I talked about the two different types of rocks. Igneous, sedimentary. What's the third type you learned about? Metamorphic. We actually have very, very, very famous metamorphic rocks here in the Okanagan. They're down south a bit in, in Penticton. It's called the Skaha Bluffs. Very important for climbers. People climb the Skaha Bluffs all the time. But those metamorphic rocks down there, they're a type of granite that has been changed under heat and pressure into nice, nice. And that is a very, very tough rock. And it's very famous because it's some of the oldest rock in Canada is down in South Okanagan. Very hard, <laughs> very tough rock, and it's very, very old. <coughs> Okay, I told you guys I was a miner, right? Yeah. I run mines all over the place. Uh, I told you that BC is very, very big into mining. Now, would it surprise you guys to hear that West Bank, the town of West Bank, right here, has about five or six different mines right in town? No, no. Have any of you guys ever seen the mines in town? No. I just saw a picture of, like, the blue chain mine. No, actual current operating mines, not old ones, current operating. You know what? I bet you you've all seen it. Every one of you have seen the mine. In fact, we have one within a couple blocks of this school. Every one of the gravel pits along this back hillside, and we have lots of them, are all considered mines. When you think about mining, what do you think? What, what kind of things do you think that they're mining out of the ground? Sure. Gold. Gold. What else? Diamonds. What do you got? Dirt. Dirt, well that, <laughs> dirt, yes. Um, silver, bronze. Silver, bronze, copper, bronze gemstone. Bronze is an alloy, you can't bronze. mine it. What? Bronze is an alloy, you can't mine it. But yeah, when we think about mining, we typically think about the, you know, exotic, the fancy things like gold, diamond, silver, gemstones. But really, the most important commodity, the most important thing that we mine here in BC is sand and gravel. Mm -hmm. Because every town has multiple gravel pits. Every road that's being built needs tons upon tons of sand and gravel to build the road. Every time they build a house, they have to fill around the house with gravel. Every road that's made, the asphalt, is made from sand and gravel from gravel pits. The most important mines we have around aren't the gold and diamond mines. There are simple gravel pits and they're everywhere. The gravel pit right behind the school here produces millions of dollars of gravel every year. And it's only one of about five we have in town. Mining is big. Mining is one of the biggest economic drivers. It's the biggest money-making thing we have here in BC. Very important mining. You guys have been nice and quiet and calm and everything. You got questions for me? What you got back there? Um, how big would you say these mines are in town, like uh, the gravel pits? The gravel pits, uh, they take a few acres each, okay. a couple dozen acres. They're not huge mines, uh, yeah. but uh, they're very, very important mines. We need them to build our houses, to build, to make concrete, to build our roads. They're very important, but they're not big. Okay.
Who else has got questions for me? Well, hey, over here. Um, what's like the... You know, in general, I like gold. Gold is my thing. But really, my favorite thing are my are gemstones. I love finding gemstones. And I have a few gem mines. I have a peridot mine. It's green. Really nice. I have lots of agates and opals. Um, I really love the gemstones, but in general, gold is my thing. Uh, what's the biggest like, gem or gold piece that you Ah, about? biggest gold? It's about the size of the end of my pinky finger. It was three grams of gold. Um, worth about $200 for one piece of gold. Why not just take sand from the desert? Instead of having to Gravel because we don't have a desert here, well, we are a desert, but we don't have the big sand deserts that you think of. So if we were to take sand from the desert, say, down south in the States, we would have to pay huge amounts to truck it up here. Yeah, way more than the cost of digging it out of the hillside here. When did you get interested in Well, you know, I started mining as a kid with my dad, probably about your age, a gold pan, and I loved it. But I got away from it until I started, until I had kids of my own and wanted to take them out gold panning. And then I started gold panning with my own kids and realized how much I liked it, loved doing it. So even though I was trying to get them interested, I kind of got myself interested again. And that would be about 10 years ago. What's the most valuable thing Valuable thing I've ever found. Um, Mining-wise, probably that one gold nugget I talked about. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing I do is I, I stake claims. I make gold claims, and I prospect them, and then I sell them. So the gold claims are, in general, as like a chunk of land, are very valuable. Very valuable. Yeah, I think I yeah, sold them for thousands of dollars. We're looking at Mount Bushri, right in our back doorstep here. We're looking at an extinct volcano. <coughs> yep. Yeah. That's the core of a volcano. So we would find basalt columns up there. What else could we find if we went for a hike <coughs> on Mount Bushri? Mount Bushri is mostly basalt and andesite, two igneous rocks, two cooled forms of lava. Uh, but there is also some sedimentary stuff from the old uh, lake bed. Uh, lake bed or that old river, I'm not sure which, but there is a whole section of Mount Bushri that is sedimentary. Even though it's an old volcano, long after the volcano sort of stopped, ceased exploding, that kind of stuff, uh, a sedimentary rock was made over there. So the chunk that makes up Mount Bushri is both igneous and sedimentary. And there's some great gemstones on Mount Bushri. Uh, there's some quartz crystals, there's some amethyst crystals, and a lot of banded agate on Mount Bushri in the basalt. Mm. Any more questions here? That was just the other section we talked about after you, <coughs> the mining place <coughs> that you are done with or so, or you, you have to reclaim the land. It's kind of where we're going with this afterwards before we get our end project, but maybe talk a bit about that. Sure, yes. Uh, as I said, I run many mine sites and reclamation, reclaiming the land afterwards is very important, very, very important, that you don't wreck the land. Mining can destroy a chunk of land if it's not done right and cleaned up afterwards. So every time I dig a hole, whether it's one shovel full or using my bobcat to dig a huge chunk of the mountain away, I have to fill in that hole afterwards. I have to sort of make it look like it's natural, plant grass seed, plant different plants on top of it, and then put, you know, logs and trees and limbs and that stuff over the whole ground so that the animals of the area will make their way back in and start living on that ground again. Uh, I can't leave a hole, gaping hole of mud just sitting there because that looks really bad, it's very bad for the environment. And if a mines inspector came and looked at my mine site after I was done and saw that I left that big chunk of open ground there, he would tell me that I have to fix that really quickly or he would find me big, big money. So I have to make sure I clean up after myself every time I mine. There are lots of mines, uh, old adits from over a hundred years ago and that was done by individual prospectors when there weren't these rules about reclaiming or reclamation. So 
is there, are there anything, are any, any rules around those? Like, should those holes be filled in, or? Slowly, if yeah. a new modern day miner takes over mining from that spot, he would have to clean up even from the old time miners. Oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. But no, a lot of those old mines are just left wide open. Uh, sometimes there are initiatives to go and close them up so people don't get trapped or hurt inside them. But no, there, there are old little mine shafts going into the hills all over the place. Anything else? Well, thanks. You guys were very pleasant there. You were a great audience. And I think we have an activity now. Yes, we really appreciate you coming in, Dan. Thank you. You're welcome. So we are going to work in partners around the library right now. We're going to hand out our rock kits and we're going to start trying to identify the three types of rocks from the... Thanks for watching my video, everyone. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, there's a link to the left over here. It'll take you to my channel where I have hundreds of videos on different types of mining, rock collecting, gem collecting. Please do me a favor, click that like icon, share my video, subscribe to my channel, and please leave a comment. I hope you enjoyed. Until the next one. Bye.